Gerd Feltings hails from Gelsenkirchen, Germany. His parents held PhDs in physics and chemistry. I first was interested in physics, but then I liked more mathematics because things are either true and false. It's not a matter of opinion. For me, it was clear that I had some talent. He attended Munster University and became, at age 28, a full professor at Wuppertal University, where... I managed to prove the so-called model conjecture. I somehow became famous overnight. The 1922 conjecture was about algebraic curves. There's genus one, which are called elliptic curves, usually given by a cubic equation. If you uh, take a line, in general, it meets uh, the curve in three points. They form an abelian group. This is the model theorem. So if the genus is bigger than one, then C of Q is finite. And this was open for quite some time. In the 60s and 70s, there was an analog for function fields. Their techniques didn't quite carry over. In 1983, I showed it. Well, I felt great. There was quite some excitement because it was something which people thought couldn't be done. Usually I like fields which are not in the center of interest, but where I don't have to compete with many people. And then I find them interesting in the sense they are hard, but they are doable. In 1985, he attained full professorship at Princeton University, where he continued with Model. In one astrogeny class, there are only finitely many. This uses heights and uh, p-divisible groups. From the heights, one needs the compactification of moduli spaces. And from the p-divisible group, I got to the so-called Pierre de Koch theory. So these were two things which sort of occupied me for some time after. In the end of the 80s, there was a new proof of model by Paul Reuter. I wanted to check it and then I realized that it could be used for many more things than Reuter did use it. This is the so-called Diophantine approximation. Why is it so significant? because the Diophantine equations are very common. Basically forms a lot of the foundation of modern arithmetic geometry. But also it's, it's just fundamental human knowledge. Recognition came with many prizes. His first? From the Academy in Göttingen, the Denny Heinemann Prize, which was unusual because if you get high cash prizes, you are old and not young. Ged was about 30. Next. This is the Fields Medal, which sort of moved me into the ranks of the big shots. At Wuppertal, Gerd met Angelika, also a mathematician. They married in 1984. Their daughters, Christina and Eureka, were born at Princeton. The family returned to Germany in 1994. Well, I had a choice whether my children would become American or German. And we decided we wanted them to be Germans. He became a director at the Max Planck Institute for Mathematics in Bonn. Hi. So, hello. Hi, good morning. His work days start with newspapers. I follow politics and also sports and other events. He gives regular lectures at Bonn University. If you give lectures, you talk on a lower level and you don't get too high up into the air. A respite from his research. Quite often, I get stuck and that I have to give up. What's the percentage of success? Maybe 10%. He's famous for being the most prominent mathematician in Germany. With Gerd Faldings, Bonn became a worldwide center for arithmetic algebraic geometry. It attracted a lot of other excellent people. He has some kind of dry humor that you <laughs> have to get used to. He's a very, uh, very honest uh, person. He's like a normal guy, interested in his gardening and his children, so <laughs> balanced person. Well, my daughters like to grow them. I'm more for tasks which require muscle and no brain. My wife Luz uh, loved it. 
In 2011, Angelica succumbed to cancer. We tried to fight and we had some therapy, but it didn't work. And after three months, she was dead. Of course, I miss her, but uh, what can I do? I have to live on. Your daughters visit often? It's getting less and less, of course, because they are growing up. And my older daughter, Christina, has a job near Cologne, and she has a boyfriend. And my younger daughter, Ulrike, uh, studies for a PhD in maybe two hours' drive from here. Oh, I don't entertain so much. I'm not good at cooking. So. But Gerd is a wine connoisseur. I buy too much wine, so it's piling up here. Okay, if you want to impress people, you can have this one. But I only buy single bottles because they are too expensive. Gerd's been a classical opera fan since age 10. And the obvious choices are Mozart, or Verdi, or Wagner, or Händel. That Max Planck and from my directorship I will retire maybe in six or seven years. But of course as a mathematician so you can go on working as long as you want. Henrik Avaniets has been in New Jersey since 1983, first at the Institute for Advanced Study at Princeton, and now for nearly 30 years on staff at Rutgers University. He came from Poland with his wife and two young daughters. We plan to stay maximum three years, uh, but it somehow became permanent. We're not really for political reason here, even though it was a factor because life was here much, much nicer. Great career, much better in the United States. And, and the offers were coming here. Yeah. He's met the world to this department. He's trained so many great students here. He's taught great courses. He's written amazing books. When he touches a subject, there's a clarity that comes through and it's there for everyone else to see. It was one Einstein there. You know, I mean, he's the analogous thing in the mathematical world. One third plus one, one quarter is what? Seven, 12, right? He was very interested in primes. I mean, primes are numbers that they're only divisible by one in themselves, like two, three, five, seven, 11, 13, et cetera. I did like to solve problems of prime numbers, and I have some successes. I think my best one is jointly with John Friedlander from Toronto. We proved there are infinitely many prime numbers which are representable as some of a square and a fourth power of integers. Here's a simple demonstration of how it works. For the square, use the number one. One times one is one. For the fourth power, use two. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16. 1 plus 16 is 17, and 17 is prime. This works infinitely, but not often. I mean, number of integers which are representable as sum of a square and plus a power, fourth power are very, very rare. And now finding primes in the rare sequence is even hard. It's something unbelievable to prove that there are infinitely many primes in such a sparse sequence. Prime numbers are used in the so-called crypto systems to give us internet security, to use credit cards, for instance. Encryption, uh, you need uh, primes of very special shape in order to, to claim that it's very hard to find it. You know, because you want this to be very hard. You couldn't have any kind of authentication or security on the internet without prime number theory. Henrik's work plays a role in that. When you talk about breaking a crypto system, you're talking about something which may take years to do. You have to understand things theoretically, and he's developed the tools to do that. When you see people using your concepts without even, you know, mentioning it, because nobody even knows where it actually originated from but you may see a trace of you a little bit. That's great pleasure. He creates these um, results and tools that other people can apply to problems. Daniel Goldston, a mathematician across the country in San Jose, remembers lecturing one day with Henrik in attendance. I, I think I gave a talk once in 1990, and he says, well, I, I have something I should tell you about. And so he proceeded to spend 
like an hour writing on the a board completely solving this really hard problem that sort of arose out of my talk and I said, it's okay if I take notes on this. So I, I wrote them down and, and I kept these notes for 10 years because I wanted to use what he had told me to solve something. So he probably has more than 100 results, or proofs of things that were considered extremely difficult. Whereas, you know, a lot of really outstanding mathematicians maybe have just a couple or, or maybe three or four. And at the same time, he's busy, you know, writing books and sort of developing the tools so that everyone else can also do these results. The work is done here in his home office. I like working night, late night. So usually great inspirations come from my contemplations at night. So I contemplate a lot before I start writing notes. Henrik's twin brother Tadeusz is also a mathematician. They inspired and challenged each other in high school, where they were so far ahead of other students that when the teacher came into the class for an exam... said, so you both leave the class, and everybody said, OK, we have a test. We didn't even write tests. At Warsaw University... During my undergraduate study, I have two papers accepted for publication. One became my master, the other the other PhD. At university, he met his wife-to-be, Kaja, also a mathematics PhD. We can understand each other, you know. Maybe I don't understand the details of his work, but I understand at least what kind of work he does. And Hendrik appreciates her art. I invite him to exhibitions. Yes, so yes, yes she invited me, <laughs> so I have contact with other kind of people. Mm -hmm. And so there is a nice exchange of, of uh, feelings. At 67, Henrik wants more work. I don't intend to retire. You can be very productive, prolific also later. 